amplify this. Here's another blast, another hand of the week called High Stakes Poker. On the way home from Monte Carlo, I decided to give up my airline ticket and pay for a one-way seat on Larry Flint's private jet. With one quick stop scheduled in Bangor, Maine for fuel and pizza. Yes, they deliver pizza right to your plane. It was pretty much a 12-hour straight shot to Vegas. More important, Phil Ivey, Gus Hansen, Mike the Mouth Madison and I were scheduled to play 400-800 limit poker all the way home. So what's not to like? We're flying high on Larry's Gulfstream 4, playing high stakes poker so the time would pass more quickly, and perhaps I could win $50,000 on the flight home. We hired a dealer to deal to us all the way home, and even before we were off the ground, the cards were in the air. Because Ivy had won both tournaments in Monte Carlo over the previous two nights for $1.6 million, and because he wasn't used to playing poker at such modest stakes, He's used to limits of at least 2,000, 4,000. I thought he might be a little off his game. He wasn't. Gus wasn't used to playing this limit either, so he figured he'd be playing way too loose, which he did do, but he barbecued, barbecued, barbecued Mattiso and I anyway. In fact, Gus made the game much bigger than 400, 800 with his super loose and super aggressive style. And after seven hours, Mike and I were losing over $75,000 each. To have two players losing over $75,000 a piece at any point during a 400-800 game normally would be unthinkable. But then you have to factor in the Gus effect. When I hit roughly 80,000 loser, my original first-class ticket home with a bed was looking a lot more comfortable than Larry Flint's G4. You got to take the bad with the good, son. By the way, Matisau was playing tough almost the whole way home. He had only a couple of five minute lapses the entire way home. I felt I was playing well also, but you'll have to ask Ivy and Hansen. Matisau will tell you I played badly. He always says people played poorly in retrospect. Nonetheless, Mike wound up losing $96,000 and I was lucky enough to cut my own loss to $18,000 or so. We were playing a four game mixed game rotation including Omaha 8 or better, Hold'em, Deuce to Seven Triple Draw, and Chinese Poker. During the course of play, Ivy played one Hold'em hand particularly well. By the way, I had to pay $12,000 for my seat home on the jet. In this hand, Ivy raised it up with Ace-10, and I called in the big blind with King-10, and the flop was 10-6-5. I bet out 400, Ivy raised to 800, Ivy raised to 1200, and Ivy called. I then bet $800 in the dark before seeing what the next card was. When a seven hit on 4th Street, Ivy called me. Now I waited to see the last card. I didn't want to bet out in the dark into a potentially four card straight board like five, six, seven, eight, ten. 10. You know, four, five, six, seven, ten. 10. The last card was a jack. I bet out 800 and Ivy raised to 1600. I called, not liking it, and Ivy took down a nice pot. The hand was played about the way it should have been. I'm supposed to get lose a lot of money on that hand. I was very unlucky to have the king-10 side of the hand, of course, but Ivy's raise on the end was a superstar raise, especially if he was willing to fold his hand for a re-raise from me. In fact, the jack on the end froze me from re-raising if I happened to have a different two pair, since it would have been easy for me to put Phil Ivy on jack-10. So he cannot get re-raised unless I was super powerful, in which case he would have presumably have folded his hand. And he can get called by me if I have a 10 with any kicker, which was likely in a four-handed game, especially with me in the big blind. Yeah. Next time, I'll ride the whole way in the jet, but I won't underestimate Mr. Ivy, as if I ever have. I amplify. Do you?